Hello and welcome to the third video of uh, this new series of videos about creative ideas for modular synthesis. Um, today we're going to talk about feedback patching and you can think of uh, feedback patching as a guitar player who's going close with his guitar, close to the amplifier and to the speaker of the amplifier and the signal gets amplified through his pickups and then goes to the amplifier and goes back to the pickup so there's just uh, feedbacking and just a, a crazy wild unpredictable result most in most of the cases um, now we can we can recreate that in the modular world with feedback patching sending the outputs back into the inputs and um, but that's not always um, interesting so I've, um, going to, I'm going to talk about a few simple steps you can take to enjoy this um, creative idea, this creative process. Um, I use it quite often, it's one of my favorite ideas um, and I usually get unpredictable results that I can further, give, they give me ideas to, to work further with them. So you can either sample them or you could just work with them and create a, a bigger more complex system that you can manipulate live and you could just create something like a beautiful track or composition or um, yeah a full a full concert yeah so right now i have here a, a, a drone and i'm using a bit of reverb and that's another thing I would like to mention. Using reverbs for feedback patching is very, very important. A lot of these sounds uh, um, are really wild and they could be quite harsh. So you have to be careful with your ears, uh, especially if you're using headphones. Uh, so sending them into a reverberated space, it transforms them. A lot of these sounds produce new elements that you would never expect and um, while becoming less uh, harsh they reveal another part of them let's just say that so this sound is this is a beautiful drone I just got it by accident preparing for this video and I just I, I had to start with this one so shall we go back to or shall we just work our, our way back into the beginning of this patch with a tiny I will have to destroy this but just to show you how easily you can destroy something like that I don't know maybe I create something even better who knows So, I was in a state of balance, and now I'm in a state of chaos. There is another balance point, another interesting drone. It's almost like a wind blowing behind it, in the background. That's another drone, but that's not very interesting. Let's go back to this one and let's play with something else.
as you can hear, you can also create rhythmic elements. So let me go back to the beginning. Um, that was just unexpected. Uh, I wasn't going for drones. I was going for pure wild uh, feedback sounds. But that's where we came uh, at this point. So I'll take all the cables out. Let's see where we started. We st I started with a simple sine wave. Nothing interesting about that. Um, if I send now the output, another output of this oscillator back into the input, like the one volt per octave input, I'm just creating another frequency. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. Uh, I'm not adding anything. So um, another uh, a good way to start. Sorry, a good way to start a feedback patch is to send a bandpass output uh, of a filter back into the input of the same filter, and then uh, crank up the resonance, and then send the same thing back into the oscillator. Here I'm going to send it into the frequency because I have more uh, uh, options to play with. And then I will play with the frequency of the filter. It's already, you can hear like two frequencies already in there. This is cool. Now this is what I'm talking about. Now you're listening to only the reverb. I will add a little bit of the dry sound. Just giving it a little bit more body. Yes, you're free to sample this <laughs> from this video. I'm not gonna, no, I'm not gonna do that. Offer you a sample pack. This is incredible. I might I might use it. I might use it. Um, another drone. So yeah, I'm trying hard to make a crazy fight back thing and it doesn't work. Um, let me see. That's more like it. And uh, of course, the first thing you might think is, okay, uh, this creates some interesting results. What if I send um, a nice um, simple LFO or envelope to modulate this, so I don't have to do it with my hand. So th this result you can imagine through it, it just goes through all these sounds automatically. Uh, I can also send a modulation source that is on audio rate. And I immediately create more complex sounds.
So that's a, another level where you can add more complexity to the sounds you're using. Um, now, if I am going to send um, another output of the oscillator back into the filter, because the filter has more possibilities, it has a trigger input and then one volt per octave. Um, so you have use all these possibilities that you have, all the inputs and outputs that you have between the modules that they are uh, connected in this feedback patch, you can just experiment with that. Now I'm going to even more actually to, to noise. But this is interesting noise to me. It's because of the reverb. I mean, let's see what happens with that reverb. It is an interesting sound by itself, to be honest. But, yeah. I think the reverb is making it more alive. Very interesting sound. What happens if I send the same thing to the trigger input? Now that was less interesting, right? So I'll just keep it here. Let's see what we can get out of this noise. Back to lasers. And the final degree of complexity that I will show you is sending uh, an output from the filter into uh, a distortion module or some ring modulator or um, something that it will destroy the sound, something that it will smash it, something will, that will rectify it, something that will fold it. Um, that will create another level of uh, complexity. I will send this now to the trigger input. So this is the notch output of the filter going into this bottom uh, part of the of the wave shaper. We came out of the noise, we got into screaming. I hope you're not sensitive to this particular frequency. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the volume low. So, this is a point of stability, but it's really close to chaos. And, yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about. Next to that balance, this area of balance, there is interesting things hiding. So, just be careful here to just play with the knobs like really softly or look at that I just entered chaos again I like it when noise is inside that high frequencies and if I turn the frequency down now nah, I lost it again but even if you focus on the noise, it's just much more interesting noise than just normal noise generator. There is a lot of things happening in there.
And imagine you can use this also as a modulation source. So now we are listening to this sound, which is, by the way, still the sine wave from the oscillator, eh? being modulated by the filter. So you can use this as a modulation source. If you have another filter, for example. So, yeah, I, every time I'm patching, uh, and I've done this patch a lot of times, I'm, I'm, I'm again surprised again, every time. It's alive. This thing is alive. The electrons, they're, they are just not the same every time. You know that. I know that. That's why I don't mess with computers, because, yeah, they do always the same thing. <laughs> anyway, um, so I think that's it, right? I mean, you can go further. So you can modulate now this, right? Uh, or you can modulate this. I have two inputs here to modulate. And I can modulate them with... The same thing, more outputs from the oscillator. I have more inputs in the oscillator. Um, I have more outputs from the filter that I can use to modulate something else. Um, I have I have a, a, a ring modulator. Um, another, uh, you you might have other equipment, other filters, other oscillators. You can do the same thing. If the filter you go into uh, self resonance, then it's. Uh, um, it's always great, it helps. There are filters out there that you can just patch them to feedback. A great uh, option is also, if I can turn the camera here, it's just here on the side. Uh, a great combo is also the Q-Pass, which is great for feedback patching because it has so many inputs and so many outputs. Uh, unbelievable. And of course, we can turn the, the Q up, the resonance. It's just magic. This thing is really... Um, special and the mimeophone here that will amplify uh, the things that are happening there and you can just use it also as a modulation source or just uh, as a part of the feedback patch and the maths uh, as like the uh, what I'm using here for the slope generator you can use maths obviously but there are so many possibilities with just three modules and a sampler I am telling you 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 could just create a, a, an artistic identity just by that just by having the these three modules maybe a reverb and um and practice and create unique things so i hope this was interesting i tried to keep the, the volume low um but i hope it's all also very clear um i will uh, i hope it was um yeah interesting and and creative and inspiring and I will uh, see you in the next one. Who knows what that will be. Okay, till the next one. Bye.